Hi, uh, we'll get started in two minutes. Okay, so in our previous sessions, um, in our last class, we just learned Ajax, and using jQuery, we learned how we can connect with the backend services, and we can face the data, and we can bind with the view. And for that, we use the Ajax, sorry, we use the GitHub URL, uh, GitHub API, uh, and we, implemented to face the data from GitHub API, then we got the data and we bind it to your view. That's how the all the uh, real-time application works. Okay, it looks like, looks like the lip is offline. Dilip, are you there? Are you able to hear me?
Okay, so are you able to hear me now, right? So, okay, so today we are going to learn uh, AngularJS. So AngularJS is a JavaScript framework which is very popular, very widely used, well accepted by the developer community. So it's open source. So we are going to uh, learn the Angular JS, and this we are going to learn the Angular One. So which is still being used for most of the web development because Angular Two is pretty new. So the adaptability has not happened that much. People are still using and developing Angular One, and it's not like once Angular 2 has come up, Angular team has stopped uh, releasing the Angular 1 versions. Angular 1 versions also keep on coming. I think the latest Angular version is currently 1.6. And the Angular 2 has just released in three months before, maybe three to four months before. But now most of the job posting are on Angular 2. Yeah, uh, people are asking for Angular 2. Uh, there is no doubt on that, but with the knowledge of Angular 1, it will be easier for a developer to grab the Angular 2. Because sometime when they say you should have a knowledge on Angular 2, there might be a requirement like you have to port old Angular 1 application to the new Angular 2. So at that time, your knowledge on the Angular 1 will be very helpful because you have to understand that Angular 1 application first then only you can migrate to Angular 2 and the concept wise uh, most of the things are same in Angular 1 and Angular 2 but how we achieve things are different so so first I'll talk about Angular 1 uh, first we'll learn Angular 1 and then we'll see the Angular 2 Okay, so AngularJS is a MVC framework. Uh, MVC means a model view controller. So generally AngularJS say they are MV star means MV star means MV anything. So it could be MV controller, it could be model view view model, so it could be anything. So but mostly it falls under the category MVC. And so MVC is nothing but it's a design pattern by what AngularJS follow to develop the application in AngularJS. It's open source. You, we don't have to pay anything to use AngularJS. And open source has one more benefit like it will have a very good community. So if you're facing any problem on Angular, you can search over net or you can post your query you will get quick responses you'll find a lot of support from the angular community so that's also one big advantage of uh, open source and yeah there are lesser community support as of now for angular 2 but yeah because it's pretty new but angular 1 yeah it's, it's there from past four years I guess yeah three to four, four years so they have a very pretty uh, large community and it's comprehensive uh, because it just doesn't talk about how you can develop the application it talks about end to end thing it talks about how you can test angular JS application how you can do unit testing how you can then end to end testing uh, what are the best practices you should follow so so in that way AngularJS covers from each corner of web development and testability so you write any application at the end it should be testable because before pushing it to the production environment we have to make sure everything is working fine and to make sure we need to test it all the tests like unit test, end-to-end -end test and what AngularJS has done they've written few of the components only to support testing 
and they have written, they have developed few of the modules only to support end-to-end -end testing. They have created a, another framework itself. They call it Protactor, which help to achieve end-to-end -end testing. And then AngularJS just extends, extends the HTML vocabulary. And what does this mean? So we know there are few HTML elements are there like input elements, button elements, and a div, h1, ul, there are so many input elements are there, right? And so many attributes also, like for input, the ID is an attribute, class is an attribute, type is an attribute, type equal to text, type equal to number, we say, right? Those are attributes. So using Angular JS, you can create your own custom HTML elements and attributes. That's what. So that's what it means. It extends HTML vocabulary. Okay. So you can create your own custom HTML element and attribute which only your application will understand. So you can create a custom HTML attribute like focus and you'll have some logic for that. So when in your application, once Angular sees this focus as an attribute has been used in HTML, then it understand which logic to be get executed because by default, there is nothing called in, in, in HTML, I mean it's without AngularJS, there is no attribute called focused. So similar way you can create a HTML element altogether you can name it like multi-state button and it, it it could have some functionality whatever you have designed for this element and you can use this directly in your HTML files. So that's what the Angular JS is capable of doing. You can create your own HTML elements and HTML attributes and you can directly use it in your HTML file. So similar way the third example you can see user title it's a custom one, what, I mean, I've just given an example. You can create like this and you can have an attribute like user where you can pass some information. So you can create something like this. We call this, when we extend the HTML vocabulary, in Angular term, we call it a directive. And we'll, we'll know more about that. So you just uh, listen this word for now. So when we create any new HTML attributes or elements by our Angular JS that will be custom to our application. We call it directive. So there are a few inbuilt Angular directives also available. It means inbuilt new HTML attributes which only Angular JS application can understand. So if you remove Angular JS, uh, those attributes will have no meaning. So now we'll come to the Angular architecture. So the Best thing in AngularJS, why it's so popular, is its two-way binding. And what a two-way binding means, two-way binding means we'll have a view, which is nothing but HTML, and we'll have a controller, which is nothing but your JavaScript file, right? So you can create a two-way binding between your HTML file and JavaScript, so anything gets changed in your JavaScript file, your HTML file will automatically know it and update it. Anything change in your HTML file, your JavaScript or a controller will able to know it and it can do changes accordingly. So that's called two-way binding. So as a programmer, we don't have to do much of the things. We just have to create a binding relationship between the HTML and the JavaScript, or in Angular term, if I say I have, I'll, I'll every time say view and controller. View means your HTML part, controller means some JavaScript logic. So it can create a relation between your view and controller. So anything changes in a view, controller will get to know. Anything changes in a controller, the view will get to know. We'll see in the example how to achieve that, but that's possible in two-way binding, which was not possible in any other framework when Angular has come up. There are other ways to achieve this, but for that we have to write a lot, uh, write uh, lines of code to achieve that, but in AngularJS it just happens out of the box. 
So that's so that helps the developer to write less because this two-way binding we can achieve using jQuery also, but to do that you have to write so many things. You have to use those jQuery selectors. You have to every time listen for those. So you have to register an event saying change. Let's say there is an input box is there, right? So if anything change in that input box, my JavaScript should know it, right? Let's say I'm typing Angular, the example that we saw yesterday. So when I type A, then when I type N, my JavaScript file should aware of okay, A got typed, N got typed. So that achievable in jQuery, but for that I have to listen for that on change event. There is some event called on change, means you're changing the value of the input box. So I have to register a callback over here and every time you type something, my this callback function will get fired and I, can, I have to retrieve the value. That's how it can be achieved in jQuery, but in AngularJS it's just happening out of the box. Okay, uh, and then the dirty checking. Okay, so what this dirty checking is, to achieve this two-way binding, uh, AngularJS what it does, it just keeps on checking whether any models, model when I say it means it's a variable, any variable got updated or not, whatever I have put in a binding. So all the variables what I have told in AngularJS to bind it with view and controller. So this dirty checking what it does, it's keep on checking whether that value is changed or not, whether that value is changed or not. So that's how it it's achieved this outer box to a binding. And then finally is a dependency injection. Uh, what this dependency injection is? The so dependency injection is, let's say you are creating a controller and in that controller you have some other common code you are dependent on. So in that case, okay, so I'll give you an example another way. So let's say there is some common logic is there whose job is to just compute some a very complex logic. So it just takes few of the inputs and let's say there are few, let, let's say tax calculation, right, which is a very complex uh, calculation, right. So let's say there is a function we have written whose job is to do that. And that tax calculation function is used by so many uh, functionalities. So, so many places in my application we use that function. So what I have to do, I just have to write it once and wherever I need that logic, right, I need that logic in that controller, I can just inject it. So in that case what will happen, that logic will have a separate file altogether or we call it in Angular a separate service, we call it Angular service, so it will be a separate service and wherever I need that, I can just inject it, that service and I can use it. That's called dependency injection. So it's not about that, there are few of the uh, components which we don't develop because it will be available online. Let's say you want to implement a media player in your application. So you don't have to write the code from the scratch to uh, develop that media player. Someone already must have done in Angular. So you can take their code and you can just inject in your application and you can start using it. So that's called dependency injection. So whatever the modules and the services I'm dependent on, I can inject that on my controller and I can use it. Okay, so then comes Angular components. So there are three basic components are there in Angular. One is called controller where actually all the logics which helps to manipulate the view, all the logic which helps to manipulate the view goes in controller. So any manipulation to the view, like you want to create a button on the fly, you want to show a list of items, you want to delete something from that item list, you want to edit something from that thing. So whatever for that we have to do a couple of uh, UI changes at the runtime, right, based on the user action. So those all logic goes to controller. 
and view and directive. So view is like your HTML and directive I told right any new HTML attributes and elements what we can create in Angular custom or Angular provides a few inbuilt directives I mean inbuilt new HTML elements and attributes so that also goes into view so that's one part and there the another component in Angular is called services so if I say services it's not like a back-end service or REST API not it's, it's Angular services so what the Angular services contain it's contain the business logic the common business logic which actually your uh, functionality be like like let's say you want to compute income tax right that's what told so we are creating an income tax calculation website so I should have a logic which can create uh, which can calculate uh, the uh, the income tax slab, I mean income tax stubs. When I give some inputs, what's my salary, uh, and like and the like stuffs like that, then it can able to say me how much tax I need to pay. So let's say you want to write those kind of. So that's my core business logic for the website, right? So those those will goes to services. So three integral components. One is controller, directive or view, and services. So these are the three building blocks of Angular JS application. And then uh, get started with Angular JS application. So we'll get started with Angular JS application. So to use Angular JS application, we need the Angular JS library files or the framework files or the Angular JS source. And we have to add to our HTML, right? The way we add in a script tag, how we have done for the jQuery. Right, we just have downloaded the jQuery and uh, you can put it uh, and you just reference it in your HTML file or you can download or you can provide a server path where your AngularJS file has been hosted. Okay, so we'll just go to Plunker to see that and the beauty is this Plunker website also has been developed using AngularJS. So if you want to add Angular, and go to more, 1.6.1, oh, it's got added. You can see it's got added. So this is nothing but this is some uh, server where this Angular JS file has been hosted. I told right, 1.6 is the latest version of Angular, so it's which has been in version one. In version two, it's two. So, angular.js, you saw that, it's been hosted, once you've done that, means done, your angular.js source code is included, now we can use all the angular stuffs, but if you run now, you'll not see anything special, because we added this JavaScript file now, because we are not using any of the methods or the modules or the services what angular.js file provides we have not used that so we have to use that also so first step is to add that source okay done and then the next step is to add one directive called ng-app in our html file and ng is short form of angular okay so what we'll do, so you can just in the here HTML, you just say ng-app, okay? So if you just put this ng-app, so by this, the Angular knows, okay, now from that point, it's an AngularJS application, okay? So from that point, it just understands it's an AngularJS application and for the time being I'll just use 1.2.28 and I'll tell why and then I'll uh, go to the latest version 1.6 so I'm just using 1.2.28 there is some reason I'll explain that okay so you just have to add this ng-app so when you add this ng-app angular knows okay 
So ng dash app is nothing but it's an Angular directive. I told right with that we can create a custom attribute and elements using AngularJS. So this ng dash app is a custom HTML attribute what Angular Chase is providing us, and we call it in Angular term it's called as a directive. So this is inbuilt directive what Angular JS has provided us. Okay, so with this now it's an Angular JS application and we can see few of the things which only possible uh, because I've added this ng app. So if I added this ng app means now from the line number 2 to line number 14 it's been controlled by it's been controlled by our Angular JS aptly angular js so that's why we put that ng dash app okay so now if you see uh, i'm just using this double curly braces i'm not sure if you've seen this before or not so this double curly braces is a uh, angular binding directive okay or we call it interpolation also so in this you see i'll do some operations so what i'll do i'll just do 5 divided by 4 and you can see I got a result of 1.25. If you might be thinking what's great in that, so what I'll do, I'll just remove this ng dash app. And you can see what it has come. It has come as it is how I mentioned in my HTML. So basically whatever you mention in your HTML, that doesn't do any computation. It just display as it is. Because I've just mentioned hello plunker, so it's displaying as it is. Similar way I have put double curly braces and inside that I have just put 5 by 4 so it will just render as it is because because I had just told okay this app is now con this application is now controlled by AngularJS so when you do like this so anything you do inside those double curly braces if you are doing any arithmetic operation then it will have a computation so that's why when I put that ND dash app and when I say here 5 dash 4 it do a computation and show as a result 1.25 if I put anything here x anything like this then it will give me some error it might have thrown some error because it's looking for this variable see if I say inside this hello it's not going to work because it's looking for that hello variable because it's trying to resolve that right you can see it's it's returning, it's giving me, uh, uh, it's, it's, it doesn't throw any error, but it doesn't render anything also here because it's trying to look for that variable hello, which it didn't find. That's why it didn't register. But if you want to display as a string, then you have to mention it as a string, then you get it as a string. If you want to do string concatenation, that's also possible over here. I can say hello angular. So you can see it came hello and right because now I'm using string but if I remove the string double quotes then it will consider it's a variable and look for that variable somewhere in controller basically and it didn't find because we have not written anything in the JavaScript. So we are actually the controller. So this is our first Angular JS application, and this is the first thing that we learn. So you have to add this Angular JS file to our HTML. Then you have to add this ng dash app, and then you can start using Angular. And the best part is where you can. So generally, we best practice is we add this ng dash app at the top of our application, so that entire application will be considered as an Angular application. But you can add it at any point. I can add it in a body also, or I can create a div. Okay, I can add here also. So when I created a div and when I added this, you can see the line number 15 now just displayed as it is with the double curly glasses. It's not resolving it. Why? But if I copy this guy and put it here, it will work. You can see the difference. It's because when I add ng dash app in line number 12, you can see the div starting point is 12 and end is 40. So it considered only this div has to be part of AngularJS and rest of them are not part of AngularJS. So that's why in only from line number 12 to 14, 
it's taking control of uh, the angular js is taking control and the rest of the faces it doesn't read so that's why the line number 15 is printing as it is but line number 13 is actually concatenating concatenating to string or adding to strings hello and angular and display so that's how we have to mention this in here so the best practices it has to be here at the top line number two okay so we'll go back to slide that's what I'm talking here okay so before even learning angular js we have to be aware of few of the javascript patterns and why you have to be aware of the few of the javascript patterns because angular js use these javascript patterns heavily uh, in its application creation so angular relies heavily on functional nature of javascript and so these are the few of the patterns function using as an abstraction function used to build modules function used to avoid global variables and then finally what is there that's called immediately invoked function expression in short we call it iffy so these are the four javascript patterns what i'll talk about uh, because angular uses those heavily and then we'll move to angular again Okay, so to understand these four patterns, we'll go back to our Lanka and we'll go to script.js file and we'll just learn those in writing few programs. Okay, so I can write a function like this where work equal to function. Okay. And here I can say console.log working hard. Cool. So if I so this is called function expression. Okay. And if I have to call this function, I can I can write one more function. So in JavaScript you can call a function from inside a function you can see this is one more function and I can call a function inside this function and you can pass a function also so you get if this will receive a function I just given a name is app and I'll call that function you can see what kind of structure I've created so I've, I have just written two functions the first function is a normal function uh, we call it function expression and where I am just having one console log working at then I just written one more function expression that's name is doer and that function is actually receiving a parameter called function you can name it as a fun also so it's receiving a function and that function I'm calling from line number six and now what I'll do I'll just call do work and I'll pass this function work here. Okay, so that and now if you see console log, I got a message saying working hard. So what happens? The line number nine. So these two are just function definitions, right? So this will not call automatically. So the execution started from the line number nine because these two these are just our declarations. Doer. So I'm calling doer and I'm passing a function, the work function and what this do work does whatever the function it just received it just call it so that's how my working heart is coming so this is nothing but uh, we call it as a function as abstraction and this is one kind of pattern in javascript where we pass function to a function okay so and next we'll see how we can use the function to uh, build modules okay so even before that let's say I want to change something here I can have a console log here uh, and I can say working star started right then I'll call the function whatever I have received and then I'll have one more console.log 
I can say work done. Okay, so work work started, work done, and in between a message will come working hard. So now you can understand. So this do work is have has its own functionality where it's just doing printing, working started, work done, and then in between line number seven, it doesn't know what will happen. So whatever the function I'll pass, that will get executed. So it's not like I'll always pass this function. I can write one more new function, right? And I, I can say that play, play. I can have a function which is say playing hard. And then we'll just remove this work so that we'll look more generic. Work started, done, or completed. We'll write it over here. Okay, so now I can call that again, do work here. And this time I'll just pass play. Now you can see started, working hard, completed. Started, playing hard, completed. So. So like this, do work is now a very generic function which can receive any function and just uh, run that function. Okay, so then what we'll do, we'll create a module uh, in JavaScript and we'll see how we can create a module. So I'll just uh, remove this guy and now what we'll do We'll create a function whose name will give create worker. So which will just create a multiple worker equal to a function. Okay. And inside that I can have to another function. So inside a function there are functions. So I have of having a function called task one. Okay, and I can have a console.log and I can say that inside that task one and I'll copy this guy again. I'll write one more function task two. You delete out there? Okay, cool. So now what happened, if I have to call this task 1 and task 2 from outside, the line number 11, so these are local to the function called create worker. I can't call them directly, right? So I have to expose it. Then only I can call that. So how I can expose those? So what I can do, I can write a return. I'm passing a return as an object and instead of task one, I'll name it job one, which I'll assign to task one. Then I'll say job two, which will assign with stars two. So now the inside name are task one and task two, but the outside name is job one and job two. So it's like the nickname task one, task two, because that only the create worker you know, understand it, but when I expose to out, outside of this function, let's say outside of this function, someone wants to use this task one and task two, then they have to call it as a job two entry. So by this, what we have done, we have created a module now. In that module, these are the two methods what I have exposed, and these are public methods now, because anyone can use it now. So now I'll create an instance out of that create worker so I'll just say var worker equal to create worker done and now I'll just say worker dot job one worker dot job two you can see I got a task one task two two messages which are nothing but these two console logs so this 
what we have done just now is called a module. So now create worker is a module which exposes two methods and if you want to use that method now we can call it worker job one and job two. So what's the benefit of having these modules? Let's say you want to have your some private implementation which you, you don't want to expose to the outside world. Outside world I mean to say outside of this create worker function. You want those logic to be hidden so that no one can access those. People can only access this job one and job two. So we can variable do that. So create one variable var equal to let's say work count which will manage the count, how many times the task has been done. Okay, and what we'll do, we'll just increase that work count every time this function get called. So I'm just using plus equal one. Okay, means it will add one and it will store it back. And same I'm doing over here also. Okay, and then we'll just display that here. We'll just say plus and just just control lock work count also. So now you can say we have created a private variable now. Okay, we have just created a private variable now that's called work count that we are not exposing because I have not put in put that into a return statement. So the outside this worker object can only access this job one and job two. It cannot access this work count because this is now private implementation to me. Okay, so in that case, when I just run this, I'll just get the count, but I cannot directly change that count. Right? You can see task one, task two. So now I can call it multiple times. Let's say I'm calling job two again, job two again. So we can get to know, you can see the count getting increased, right? One, two, uh, three, four, like that. And outside guy cannot access that work count. So if I say work here, the worker dot work count, Have to say console console dot log worker dot work count. So I just want to print that directly. See, it says undefined because it's not that worker work count. It says undefined. It doesn't say the actual number because it's looking for some other work count. It's it's not actually looking for this work count. That's why it says undefined. So that's what it is. So now this work count is your private thing. So if you have to create this kind of structure, uh, this is the pattern. So where you can write your entire logic in this create worker and you can only expose those methods what you want to expose. So that your outside stuff cannot come and modify the logic or the variables what you don't want. They can only access those function what you have made those as a public and to make this public you have to do something like that. So this we call a function to build modules and we have created a module now and you can see everything we have done using creating a function on. Right? There is nothing called class and all because this kind of structure if you have to do in other programming language you have to use class, public, private, right? But here everything is done using your function with new JavaScript that's called JavaScript ES6 there are keywords like class and all by which it does the traditional way how the Java and things done but that's uh, out of scope for us because I'm not talking about the JavaScript ES6 okay so now we'll see how we can uh, write something to avoid global variables right so if you see this program, currently worker is our global variable. And how you can avoid creating global variables because what's the harm of having global variable? If it's a global variable, anyone can access it, anyone can change it. 
So let's say two guy, two people are working on the same application, and you created a global variable saying worker, and your colleague also created a variable called worker, and when you merge your code, your code will override one of the worker with other, and your functionality will go in mess because you guys have both used the same global variable. And one global variable will override other global variable because in JavaScript anywhere you can override the variable, right? Here I can say worker equal to five, right? I don't know somewhere someone has done this, but I, I, I'm not aware of that. I still want to use this worker dot job one, and it will just screw it up. You can see worker dot job one is not a function saying because I just override the worker object to just five a number so because it's a global anyone can access and override it how to avoid that so to avoid that what we can do, do we can wrap this entire thing inside a function so in that case, so I, I, I should have, I, I have to create multiple uh, variables now, right? I can create worker one, worker two like this. So I'll have multiple global variables. So what I'll do, I'll just, here I'll just write a function. I'll just write a function. Let's say I'll say this is my, my program equal to function okay and I'll just copy this entire thing and put in this function so now what I did the entire code what I have written I just put it inside a function called my program so now there will be only one global variable in my entire code that will be my program so inside that now you are you can create as much as variable you want you can have like create worker you can have some other function and then again you can create variable to access that function methods but at the global level I'll have only one function that's called my program and I just have to call that my program once so that my code will get executed so with this pattern now you have reduced my program is not defined but I've defined it here okay it, okay there was a spell mistake it's program and I can see it's it's working uh, as it is I can see all those console logs task one two three four right so this is a pattern by which you can put everything inside a function and just call it so in that way you can just expose one global variable and you can happily avoid the confusion or overriding of your multiple global variables because one global variable you can set a very unique name which you feel yeah it, it might not be possible or someone might not have think of then yeah you are safe but again why to have one global variable so how we can make it even zero global variable so that our program works as it is and there will be no global variable okay pretty simple so then comes immediately invoked function expression and for what we do does that to do that so we'll remove this my pro okay so in this my program I'll just remove this my program name okay but this will be there and from here I'll just remove the my program name so now I am having a function which is just an anonymous function a function which doesn't have a name and I'm called so that function is having all the codes and that function I have to wrap inside a function parenthesis and then again just call it so if you write something like this so this will call automatically so whenever this file gets loaded 
this function, all the initialization, everything will happen. It will get called also at MBTQL because you have a syntax like this. And if you run this, you can say it's we got still got the same output. Our program is working fine, but now you can see we don't have a single global variable. So no one can now override nothing. Our program will work pretty safe. So this we call if you immediately invoke function expression. So this is a function expression which get invoked immediately as soon as the script.js file gets loaded in browser. So that's all about the JavaScript patterns, what will help us when we'll write application in Angular.js. Okay, so now come back to Angular. So in AngularJS, I told it's a MVC component in Angular. Uh, so we'll have a model, we'll have a view, we'll have a controller. Model is nothing but your variables where you store data. View is your HTML and directives. And controller is where your all logic related to manipulating your view goes. Good. So controller is a function that Angular invokes itself. So there is a directive in uh, AngularJS, what we call ng-controller. So it's the same way how we have used ng-app, right? Similar way you, we can use a directive called ng-controller. And whenever I say in Angular is controller, controller, so controller technically it's nothing but a function. So everything is a function in JavaScript. So when I say controller, controller is nothing but it's a function that Angular invokes automatically. We'll see that when I put it in an example. And controller takes a parameter default and that parameter name is dollar scope. Cool. So now what we'll do, we'll go back to Chrome. Okay. So before that, we'll just finish up this slide. And what this talk, so there are a few things what I talked. So we can use this ng-controller directive. We can put it in our HTML. You can see this code snippet, right? So that is having multiple divs. And we have put ng-app already so that Angular understand, okay, this is the area which I have to take control of. And then in the next div, I have used a directive called ng-controller. And I'm saying equal. And I've given some controller name. You can see. I've given a name main controller. You can give it any name. Uh, I've given a name as main controller. Done. So this main controller will nothing but it's a name of the controller. Okay. And this name of the, with the, this name of the controller, we have to create a controller. And this is a code snippet where I'm creating a controller. So I told controller is nothing but it's a function. So I just have to create a function with the name main controller. So I've created a function, you can see, from where main controller equal to function. And the controller by default takes a parameter called dollar scope. So I am I, I have mentioned that parameter dollar scope. And then you can see uh, the curly braces, which a body of the function. And then I'm mentioning something called dollar scope dot message. So message is nothing but a variable. So anything which you linked with dollar scope, okay, we call it model. So model is nothing but a variable which can hold data. So anything which you attach to the dollar scope, you can say I, I mentioned dollar scope dot message equal hello. So this message is nothing but now called model in Angular JS. And the beauty part is now this HTML can directly read this message variable because that is a part of dollar scope now. So dollar scope itself is an odd model. So anything which is attached to the dollar scope are model. Okay. So this is a very fundamental things in AngularJS. So we'll go back and we'll create our own controller. We'll create a model and we'll do a binding and we'll see how things goes. Okay, so we don't need this JavaScript. We'll just, I'll just remove it. 
and then we'll come back to here and here we'll do a couple of changes so what I will do we'll just remove this all things okay and in the body itself what I'll do I'll write in G dash controller okay so there's a directory how to use and I have to give a controller name let's say my controller name is main controller you can name it anything main controller is just a name so I can just say main I can just say display anything any name okay and then I have to create the function with the same name main controller right then I'll come to script.js I'll just say var main controller equal to function and this function default takes a parameter that's called dollar scope and in the dollar scope I'll create a variable called message and in that I'll give a message saying hello angular js okay and then done I'll go to the index.js and instead of this hello clunker I'll use that double curly braces which we call interpolation and in that double curly braces okay I have removed this ng dash app I put this ng dash app also that's why it was showing that double curly braces now it's gone and there I just say message this message is nothing but the same variable this message and I can see hello angular js has come up right this we have done in jQuery also right something in the JavaScript file you want to display it on view how you have done we went ahead search for the selector using the class name or ID then change the text right but here in uh, AngularJS you can see how simple it is and how few lines of code just helped us to achieve that so we created a view this is a view where we just use interpolation that's double curly braces or you can call it as a binding directive we bind the model with view now so our model name is message which has to be part of dollar scope object so anything you put on a dollar scope object HTML can read that so in the HTML you can see I have not mentioned dollar scope I just mentioned message and I can able to get this hello angular JS and this double curly versus is actually looking for that variable message it look for that variable message inside a controller called main controller so because if I remove this line it is not going to work because that link will be break because this is a line which creating a link between this function called main controller and this body so this is how the angular JS application get written you can see how simple to render something which is there in the JavaScript to a view and this is called binding because we binded a model to a view but I have not still done to a binding that I'll tell later this is how we create controller this is how we create model and this is a simplest angular JS application what we have created now so we'll go back to our uh, doc uh, slide and we'll see what we're saying here so we are uh, I have given a definition for all this if I say model so models are nothing but a properties of scope and scopes are attached to the DOM DOM is nothing but document object module which is nothing but HTML thing where scope properties are accessed through bindings and that's what we've done that's what the model is so if you see the program what we written if I say what the model is the model is a message variable and then a view a view is nothing but a HTML template which will have few of the data binding and few of the directives right and the directives what we have used till now is ng-app and ng-controller and these are angular provided directives so you can also create a similar kind of directive and uh, and you can we can use it that that will see in our future session how we can create directives and if I have to talk what the controller is 
So the JavaScript function, what we have written, and we've given a function name as main controller. So that's actually a controller. So and we can able to uh, create a link between our view and a controller because of a directive called ng dash controller. So all the logic uh, behind the application goes to the controller. Okay, the service also there for the common logic, but the logic which actually holds the model data and do a manipulation that goes to a controller. So this is what a basic structure of Angular application. You can find any complex Angular application or any easy Angular application. This is the core concept of AngularJS. Okay, so then the controller capabilities. Your application can have multiple controllers, so it's not like a uh, single controller only. So in in if you see this application, right, you can see I'm, I'm having multiple controller. One controller is state controller, which is just for this div where I'm just showing current time, and then one more directive is there in G dash control. You can see one more controller is a stop controller. So you can create multiple controllers on your application and you can just attach that. So how we can do that, so if I can go over here and I can copy this entire stuff and I can say here is second controller, right? And here I'll say hello Angular 2. Second controller and now here I can create a, a div. And this H1, I'll put it over there. Okay, so instead of hello, we'll say welcome Angular 2. And here, I'll remove this ng controller from here. And I can just put it over here. And similar way, I can have one more div. This uh, div name will be second controller. And you can say it works. And I can still use the same message variable because now this message is different from this message because when the line number 12 gets executed, it looks for that message model inside the main controller. And when line number 16 gets executed, it looks for the message variable in second controller. You can give it a different name also. You can give it same name also because this both message are now different. So this is where you can have multiple controller also. But what I have did currently, it's not an ideal scenario when you have multiple controller, but uh, there you will find a cases where you need multiple controller, multiple views, everything. But yeah, uh, this I just demonstration uh, demonstrated that we can have multiple. And similar way we can have nested controller also. So inside a controller, again, you can see a set some div and you can say which controller will can be used. And we can have complex models also. Now if you see our models were very simple, it was just a single variable message. You can have a complex model with a big objects, so many property of that object, methods, everything a model can have. Okay, and it's not only to or render some text on a view we use model. A model can be assigned to attributes also. You can see uh, image SRC. Uh, so image SRC means what? Uh, we just give some image path to the SRC attribute, right? So there also we can do this double curly braces and we can pass the URL. So that URL we can store in our controller and that we can just assign to source attribute of image element. So in that way also our models get binded with the attributes of these two elements. We'll see that in the example also. Okay, so now there is something called module. So now whatever you've done, we created a controller, we created uh, and we bind the model we created a model and we bind that model to our view. That's what we've done, right? So controller usually stay in module. 
to avoid the global namespace because what the mistake now we have done, we have created global variables, right? Main control is a global variable, second control is global variable. So whatever I have told before, we should not use global variable and we did. So how we can uh, eliminate the global variable, we have to create module. We have learned, right? We have to create module helps us to do that. But how we can create module in AngularJS? Okay, so we can create a module. Uh, so there is one method in AngularJS is the module itself. You can see this code snippet uh, where I'm saying angular.module and I've given some name. So by this, I can create a module in AngularJS so that I'll save from creating global variables. Okay. So one application will have one module only. So for so there the restriction is you can have multiple controllers, but you can have only one module. So in a single application, we cannot create multiple modules. We can use multiple modules. Let's say my module is dependent on some other module. That's fine. I can use that module, but my application will be will have one module only. It will not have multiple modules. <coughs> so we have to register we have to create a module then you have to register the controller in that module and then the application works seamlessly and that module we have to specify against that ng dash app we'll see we'll see all this thing so we will come back to our chrome so let's say we'll create a module first so how to create a module so i just have to say angular dot module I have to give some name to the module let's say I'll give a name as main module only you can name it anything and then the second parameter is just a square bracket you can see this is just a square bracket blank and why it's blank so when you are dependent on some other module then you have to pass that module name let's say if I have dependent on some XYZ module then I have to pass the reference of that module, then I can use the functionality of that module. So let's say there is a module is there which helps us to integrate the Google map. So someone has already developed uh, which can show us the Google map, but we don't want to write it from scratch to develop that Google map features. I just want to use it in one of my pages because that's not my core business logic. So I can just, uh, use that module and I can say I'm dependent on that module and I'll just integrate that module say uh, Google map and I can use all the features of Google map but currently we are not dependent on any module so when you're not dependent it will be black this is how we can create a module once you create a module then we have to assign it against ng app currently we are saying ng app doesn't have anything against that so you have to uh, do something like this okay and I told I'm just using a 1.2 version for now and later we'll I'll say why I am using 1.2 instead of 1.6 so after 1.2 onwards angular doesn't allow to create a global variable itself so your application should have a module so you saw our application works seamlessly without creating a module but what will happen if I just comment this line and I'll just remove this guy from here and instead of 1.2.8 I'll use the 1.2.6 now and if I run this application it throw me error it says the controller with name and control is not registered because it doesn't allow you to create a global controller variables like this so you have to have a module now so now it's a good time to create module and now I just put here also main module okay, and then once you create module you have to register those function against the module okay 
and how we do that registering a function against the module that's pretty simple I have to take a reference of this module what I created I'll just tell the references where app equal to this I'll just cut it I'll make it as a first line okay and then I just written those functions and then I have to register it. So to register, I just to say app dot controller. App is a reference of that module what I just created. Controller. Okay. So this is just a function, and I just have to pass that controller name, which is main controller, and then the function. Function also same. The name also same. Okay. So this is how we create. We have registered main controller. Now you can see that guy is working. Hello Angular JS, but the hello welcome Angular 2 is not working because I have not registered the other controller in the module. So to register, you see the line number 11. How we do? Just take a reference of that module, then call dot controller, and in that you have to pass two arguments. You have to call that with two arguments. One is a name of the controller. So our controller name is main controller. That's what we have given here. You can see right. And the function. So these two can be different, but as a standard, we give it always same. So you can name it something else. You can just name it main because that's a function name, and you can give it your main. In that case, also it will work. You can see it's work because my controller name is main controller, but the function which I'm attaching with a controller, the function name is main. Or what I can do, I can just copy this function and put it over there also. Then in this case, I don't need this as well. You can see it's still working fine, right? Okay, the error is coming from the other second controller because that's not registered. So this we call inline function. So you can either do that, but the best practice to uh, specify a function and just put a name over there. Okay. So if I have to do the for the second, I can do the same. And just have to use second controller and the second controller the name. This also will change to be in controller because it's but best practice to have the same name, but I just show you for demonstration purpose. You can have a different name as well. And now you can see our application works fine, and now we're using Angular 1.6, 1.6. This is a problem. I just have to say Angular. This is actually not required. Oh, it's it's oh, cool, yeah, right. So this is how you can create a module. You can sim you can saw simple the line number one how we can create module, and line number eleven twelve how you can register a controller against that module. Cool. Then we'll go back to our slide. Okay, so that's all what I have for today. I think I can show you one example more. Uh, if you are okay with that, if you have time, are you? Yes. Okay. Cool. So we'll we'll do one more example because this hello Angular and welcome Angular doesn't make any sense. So we'll we'll do something like uh, at least a small real application. Okay. So what we'll do uh, for that, uh, we'll just change something in the R here. So here, and you can see this again, uh, one problem we have did here, we have again created a global variable called app. And main controller everything, right? And you know how to avoid the global variables. You can create a iffy. How to create a iffy? Write a function. Wrap, cut it everything put inside that function cool and then for if we have to call that and we have to wrap it it's done our program is working fine and we avoided creating any global variable everything inside our if okay so with that now what we'll do we'll we'll create an application which will uh, have few more details on our model which will have a name of a person 
an image of the person and few messages and we'll, and we'll uh, bind that to our view okay so what we'll do I'll just remove the second controller and this also is not required now and from HTML also I'll just remove that second controller and this ng controller I'll move to dev body because uh, now we'll have a single controller only and what I'll do is so we'll just create one more object so let's say we'll create an object saying that details so details of a person so let's say I'll just have a property called first name and I'll give a first name uh, let's say we'll use our prime minister name okay and then we'll say last name and we'll just use it okay and we'll give them some source source of the CM and we'll change this to our PM details the message okay everything is having two columns okay more it's failing unexpected identifier which identifier okay I just missed a comma over here okay so now we have created object you can see our PM details has already come up but this details is not coming in view because we have not uh, rendered that right we have not minded it and again it's not part of dollar scope so anyway if I just put details it's, it's not going to work so in the in the HTML what we'll do and if I just change to few things if I just say I'll just put one more div and in that div uh, I'll just use x3 okay and I'll just say okay. I cannot use details you can see if I use details it's not going to work you can see I'm not able to see anything so I have to have this inside a dollar scope so what I'll do I can tap dollar scope dot details and I can assign this guy over there okay that makes sense right or I can say EM details or anything details that's fine and then what I'll say uh, now you can see this entire object has come up over here but I don't want in that way I'll just say details dot first name I'll use one more is three. I'll say details dot last name. Okay. And then uh, the image, right? We need, uh, we have an image also. So uh, I will show how we can render that image because that image that we already have it. So, I'll just use image tag for that. So there is something called image element, and there I can just say src equal to, and I can use that double curly braces, and I'll say d, d tail start what was his name src only right. So I'll just say d start src. You can see the image has come up now. So this is how you can we so we just don't use the double curly braces or the binding operation just to bind and inf display the information. We you can bind it to the attribute also. Now you can see SRC is an attribute, and there we just bind the image URL. So if we change the URL over here. It will change in the view also. 
So let's say one more thing we'll add it. So if you hover, so I just say title, title equal to, I can just say details dot first name and give a space details dot last name and now you can see when I hover on the image it gives us a name of name of the PM also okay. so that's how you can uh, do things. Now you can see our, our model is complex because in our model now an object is there, that object again having three properties, two are string type and uh, two are containing the names, third one is containing the image and we binded everything over here and we created this page. So it it's looks good now because it's, it's some uh, almost uh, this kind of things we do in an actual application also, right? And in the real scenario, actually, this information doesn't be hard coded in your controller. This has to come from backend services, right? So you should hit some URL, you get the details, and you display it. That's what it actually happens. So we learn that in our coming sessions how we can do that Ajax implementation using AngularJS. But for today, that's all what I have. And if you have any questions, you can ask. I'm good for now. OK, cool. So I'll just give you the exercise what I have prepared for AngularJS. Okay, so I want to create you an application which will look like this, a shopping cart basically. So create a below application using AngularJS. So it's a shopping cart. You can see three items are there, few wines, red, white, blue wines. And this input box will have quantity, 375. And these are the base price, $3, $12, $6. And this is a cumulative price. So you can create this kind of thing. I need one module, one controller at least, and you use Angular 1.6. And if I change this three, okay? So if I change this three to four, then this calculation should get changed automatically. So if I change this three to four, then it should four cross 3.95, and it should come that value now, okay? And if you if I hit remove, I should able to remove this entire thing. So I, I want to create a, this kind of application using AngularJS. So you can have create one module, one controller, and few of the HTML stuffs. Okay, so with this, uh, that's all what I have today. And you told you are good for now. So thank you for joining today's session. I hope you are getting all the recorded sessions and the quotes and exercises uh, after the class. And see you, see you on my next session. Bye bye.